2,328 earthquakes. 3 exceeded a magnitude 6.0. Continued unusual movement, global unrest, and more. Kick back folks, and relax. This is your weekend report. Hey folks! I hope you have had an awesome week. I want to thank you for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. For the record, today is October the 2nd, 2016. This video will speak of earthquake data spanning from September the 24th through September the 30th. It was on this day in 1987, when a magnitude 5.4 struck Peru. Three people were killed and several homes damaged at Santiago de Chuco. This is what's happening, risk of big earthquake on San Andreas fault rises after quake swarm at salt and sea. Rumbling started Monday morning, September 26, deep under the salt and sea. A rapid succession of small earthquakes, three measuring above magnitude 4.0, began rupturing near Bombay Beach continuing for more than 24 hours. Before the swarm started to fade, more than 200 earthquakes had been recorded. The temblers were not felt over a very large area, but they have garnered intense interest and concern among seismologists. It marked only the third time since earthquake sensors were installed there in 1932 that the area had seen such a swarm, and this one had more earthquakes than the events of 2001 and 2009. The earthquakes occurred in one of California's most seismically complex areas. They hit in a seismic zone just south of where the mighty San Andreas fault ends. It is composed of a web of faults that scientists fear could one day wake up the nearby San Andreas from its long slumber. The swarm actually increased the likelihood of a much more major quake in Southern California, at least temporarily. As seismic activity drops, the probability of having a large earthquake also decreases. Experts said it's important to understand that the chance of the swarm triggering a big one, while small, was real. This is close enough to be in that worry zone, seismologist Lucy Jones said of the location of the earthquake swarm. It's a part of California that the seismologists saw watch. The swarm began just after 4 a.m. Monday on September 26, with earthquakes 3 to 7 miles deep underneath the Salton Sea. The largest earthquakes hit later that morning, a 4.3 and then a pair later at night, another 4.3 followed by a 4.1. There was another burst of activity Tuesday night, September 27th. If you wish to learn more about this event, feel free to view our companion video that we uploaded just yesterday. You can find a link located in the description. US East Coast needs to watch Hurricane Matthew closely. The east coast of the United States remains on alert for potential impacts from Hurricane Matthew during the middle to latter part of this week. Matthew, currently a major category for hurricane in the Caribbean, is expected to track northward from eastern Cuba to the Bahamas Tuesday into Wednesday. Beyond that, the hurricane could track along or near the U.S. east coast. While there will be some impact from the storm on the US, how significant impacts are along the Atlantic seaboard will depend on Matthew's strength and proximity to the coast. At this time, possible tracks range from an initial landfall along the southern Atlantic coast to a storm remaining a few hundred miles offshore. Into early this week, the speed of Matthew and how it interacts with other weather systems will be a determining factor on impact on the US. Initially, Matthew will emerge out of the Caribbean as it tracks northward between an area of high pressure over the Atlantic and a dip in the jet stream over the eastern US and Gulf of Mexico. Where exactly this atmosphere highway sets up between these two features will determine how close Matthew comes to Florida. 
The next key weather system will likely be a storm system set to track into the central U.S. by Tuesday. If that system is slower to reach the eastern U.S., the chance that Matthew hits the Carolinas is greater, Dole said. Significant impacts from rain, wind and flooding could then spread up the east coast. You can view these articles and more at our Facebook page. Feel free to zoom over the when you have a moment. You can find the link in the description. Alright. Earthquake report time. Here we go. As mentioned, we finished last week off with 2,328 earthquakes. This was an 18% increase when compared to this time last week. This, along with today's and yesterday's quakes brings our monthly total to 294. For those interested, we finished September off with an impressive 8,332 earthquakes. For historical reference, a year ago today, we clocked in 271 earthquakes. The strongest to strike the planet then was a 5.2 which struck Indonesia. Once again, we were presented with an incredibly interesting week. We experienced days in which we witnessed record-setting earthquake swarms and days in which we experienced an unusual earthquake quiet. As previously stated, we registered three earthquakes that fell within or exceeded the magnitude 6 category. We will begin with a 6.9 that struck Fiji on Saturday, September the 24th. Originally estimated to be a 6.8 magnitude earthquake, but later revised to a 6.9, occurred in the Pacific Ocean, in the Fiji Islands region. According to the reports, the quake occurred at about 8.07 p.m. local time, on Saturday off the coast of Tonga. There were no reports of casualties and no possibility of a tsunami. Also on the 24th, we experienced a 6.4 that hit Tonga. This earthquake occurred off the coast and had a depth of 113 miles. The epicenter was located at a distance of 78 miles from the town of Nayafu. There were also no reports of damage or casualties. For those interested, Tonga is officially known as Kingdom Tonga Pacific Country in Polynesia. Bounded on the north by the territorial waters of Samoa, on the east by the territorial waters of Niue, and the west waters of Fiji. Finally, our friends in Japan experienced a magnitude 6.0 earthquake on Monday, September the 26th. This earthquake measured a 6.0 on the Richter scale, jolted 70 miles off the coast of Nago, Japan, at a depth of 25 miles. Thankfully, once again there were no reports of damage or injuries. In total, we experienced 35 magnitude 5 plus earthquakes strike the globe this past week. This was a slight increase in registered quakes when compared to the previous week. As you would expect, these earthquakes were centered mostly along the Ring of Fire, with Fiji seeing the most activity. This equates to five earthquakes averaging a magnitude 5.0. We also have New Zealand, which accounted for five magnitude 5 earthquakes. The average being a 5.4. Not to be left out, we have Indonesia with four, all averaging a 5.3. The most interesting in my opinion, would be the lone magnitude 5.0 that struck just off the coast of Oregon on Sunday, September the 25th. This magnitude 5.0 quake occurred in the Pacific Ocean nearly 100 miles off the coast of Gold Beach, Oregon, around 10.01 pm Saturday. A magnitude 4.6 quake rumbled nearly 100 miles off the coast of Brookings, Oregon, nearly five hours later. The first quake occurred about 6.2 miles down in the ocean floor. The second earthquake occurred further down, about 10 miles beneath the Earth's surface. We registered 92 magnitude 4 earthquakes. This was a slight decrease when compared to the previous week. Seismic swarms were limited to the usual locations which include Indonesia with 14 earthquakes, New Zealand with 10, and Fiji with 9. 
the most notable being the previously mentioned magnitude 4.6 which struck just off the coast of Oregon on the 25th and a 4.3 and a 4.1 that struck Bombay Beach, California on September the 27th, and a 4.3 that struck Bombay Beach on the 26th. The remaining earthquakes struck, for the most part, locations here in the states. We'll start with Hawaii, which registered 44 earthquakes, with the strongest being a 2.7 on Thursday, September the 29th which originated from the volcano. Alaska experienced a 17% increase in earthquakes when compared to the previous week. 634 were registered with the strongest to strike being a magnitude 4.6 that hit Nikolsky. Washington registered 41. The most intense being a 2.1 that hit Bainbridge Island. The average magnitude for all earthquakes to strike Washington was a 0.9. Oregon's earthquake activity, once again, remained largely unchanged when compared to the previous week's data. This is of course speaking about the sheer number of earthquakes registered. In total, we logged 12 last week. The strongest registered was the previously mentioned 5.0 in Gold Beach and the 4.6 in Brookings on September the 25th. California last week alone experienced an explosive 977 earthquakes. This was a 33% increase when compared to the previous week. This boils down to roughly 140 earthquakes being experienced per day. Earthquakes warms, as you have learned, have been primarily centered around the Salton Sea and Bombay Beach. We experienced three earthquakes which exceeded the magnitude 4 realm, and logged in 19 earthquakes that fell within the magnitude 3 category. That's simply outstanding for this area. The swarm total at Bombay Beach alone was 304. Nevada registered 190 earthquakes last week. The strongest experienced was a 3.2 that struck Hawthorne. Swarm activity was limited to the usual locations including Hawthorne with 77 earthquakes and BT with 27. Idaho registered 4 all week. The most intense to strike was a 1.9 which struck Shally. Montana experienced 83 earthquakes. The most intense registered was 2.7 that struck West Yellowstone. Swarm activity was primarily centered around West Yellowstone which registered 64 earthquakes. Wyoming registered 16 earthquakes last week. The strongest recorded was a 2.9 that hit Gillette. Utah 8 in 20. The strongest reported was a 1.8 in Wolf Creek. Our pals in Arizona experienced one earthquake last week. This being a 1.8 that struck Littlefield. Kansas experienced two. Both originated from Antony with the strongest being a 2.0. Oklahoma clocked in 43 earthquakes. The strongest experienced was a 3.7 in Cherokee, a 3.6 in Langston, a 3.4 in Fairview, and a 3.2 in Crescent. The new Madrid seismic fault experienced movement as well. This includes three earthquakes that hit Missouri. The strongest being a 2.0 and a 1.6 in New Madrid and a 1.9 in Litbourne. We should also note that Tiptonville and Wrigley, Tennessee experienced movement along the New Madrid seismic zone. These were a 1.7, a 1.6, and a 1.2. The North American Craton experienced movement as well. This includes a 2.5 in E-Tower and a 1.8 in Englewood, Tennessee. Also, we experienced two rare earthquakes strike South Carolina. These being a 1.8 in Seabrook Island and a 1.6 in Ladson. Not to be left out are two earthquakes that struck Louisa, Virginia, a 1.8 and a 1.6 and a 2.7 that struck Southampton, New York. That is the most activity that we have witnessed along the Craton in quite some time. Interesting. Finally, our Canadian allies experienced seismic movement as well. 19 earthquakes in total. 
the most notable being a 3.2 in Elkford. These are indeed interesting times and there are a lot of uncertainties as to what is coming our way. If you haven't already done so, I urge you to prepare a bug out bag of sorts. Basically a portable kit that contains items one would require for 72 hours of survival during a disaster. With the earth changing as it is, amongst other things, it's a good idea. And that's it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would simply like to chat, please post down below. I would like to hear from you. Feel free to post about anything that is on your mind. Make certain to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star.